human beings breathe in and out. I hope this is no surprise to you. In fact, I hope you're doing thus at this very second. But let's see if we can get a little bit of detail on how that happens and what volumes are involved. And the first one I want to introduce you to is the notion of a tidal volume. Think about what you know about the word uh, tide and see if you can figure out what this might be. But tidal volume, guys, is the quantity, sometimes we say volume, is the quantity of air, quantity of air breathed in and out, breathed in and out, breathed in and out per breath. So get yourself familiar with that idea. When I breathe in now and out now, the quantity of that, or the volume of that is my tidal volume, okay? So it's the breath, it's the individual, it's the single breath, but it's both in and out, get that clear, both in and out, okay? So we're breathing that in. And I just want to sort of represent to you that at rest, guys, this will be in the region of about 500 milliliters, or in, you might want to put half a liter, okay? But that's what we're talking about with this tidal volume. At rest, we're breathing about half a liter. Now, the other concept I want you to be aware of is what we call a vital capacity, a vital capacity. So let's see if we can introduce this. I'm going to graphically illustrate it for you as well in a second. And vital capacity is also a volume or a quantity. I'm going to use volume this time. It's a volume of air. It's a volume of air breathed in and out. This all seems very familiar. Breathed in and out. Almost sounds like it's going to be the same. Do you know what's going to come next? During a maximal, during a maximal, so think exercise conditions, working really hard, for example, or, or just forced breathing, I suppose, a maximal inspiration and expiration. Inspiration and expiration. There, whoops, expiration. My pen's being a little temperamental today. Okay, that's it. That, believe it or not, that's an I O N in there. That's what I'm trying to get in there. I O N. Anyway, there we go. So we're talking about vital capacity here. Now, what I want to do with you guys is I want to I want to illustrate this for you. So let's bring our old trusty ruler in. Let's choose white for our x axis. There it goes. Let's continue with <laughs> white for our y axis. I'm going to try and get to 90 degrees here. See so if that looks about right. So here we go. There's our y axis. I've man managed to leave a little gap down here so let's fill that in let's just make sure that that's just so come on why not why not make it right i don't think i have but there you go and of course one of the first things i want to do is include um my axes labels and units now on the x-axis we are talking about time in seconds okay so nice and simple on the y-axis we are talking about a quantity could be volume a quantity of air and um, this quantity we are going to say is in liters, okay, little l. All right, so we have got here what we would refer to as a spirometer trace, or we're going to have in a moment. Now, if you're unfamiliar with spirometry, which of course, why, why would you not be? But if you're unfamiliar with spirometry, what it effectively entails is um, someone uh, breathing into a mouthpiece or into a mask whilst the air they breathe in and out is kind of captured in what we call a bell jar, okay? And what this does is it moves the bell jar up and down because there's fluid inside it, okay? And as it moves up and down, it creates a trace, what we refer to as a plot, okay? And I'm going to sketch that plot out for you. Anyway, just so you know. So let's take our notion, what colour did I have it? Let's take our notion in blue of tidal volume. So here it is. Here's our tidal volume. It goes like this. The upper parts are as breathing in, the lower parts are as breathing out, and I'm trying to be as regular as possible. So there, guys, there, let me, let me carry on with it. I'm trying to be as regular as I can, albeit hand drawing. This here, guys, is our tidal volume, okay? This is our tidal volume. Now, at rest, we already know that that value is going to be about 500 milliliters, okay? It's 500 milliliters. So if we were to take here, to here, the difference between these two, this is going to be in the region of 500 milliliters, give or take, okay? So that's, that we know, that we can assume. But what about this vital capacity thing then? What if at some point I go, <laughs> and try and breathe in as hard as I can, <laughs> that made me go a bit funny there, and breathe, I've got a little head rush, hang on a second. I didn't, I wasn't expecting that to happen after one single breath, give, seriously, give me a second here. I think it's the combination of trying to breathe like that without kind of preparing and too much caffeine this morning. I think that's what's happened. Nevertheless, what, 
going to do here is I'm going to imagine that the breath I just did was this one here, okay? So I'm going to sort of get rid of like the upper and lower parts. How would we represent this? Well, we'd represent it with something along these lines. We would have an additional volume of air that we breathed in. That's that green section up there. And we'd have an additional volume of air that we breathed out. That would be that, that part there. And to be clear, guys, this here, this here, would be our vital capacity. Now, what do we understand by vital capacity? It is a maximal breath, okay? So notice a couple of things. We don't manage to get all the air out of our lungs. Just be aware of that, okay? So just be aware of that. Secondly, notice that on that breath, the breath has not gone faster because the, the this, you guys know it from physics, right? There's a transverse wave, so I'm not going to get into that here. But of course, if this if this uh, went at a higher a higher rate, a higher frequency, you'd see a concertinaing of these curves. This is going at exactly the same rate in this example I'm giving. But what we've got is we've got an additional quantity of air, and that is our vital capacity total. Okay, so we've got this additional quantity of air we can breathe in and out. And of course, if we were interested. We could actually measure that, right? Now, I'm not going to get into values here because I don't think it's the point, but that could be measured here. Now, two things I would like to finish off with you. Point one, when we exercise, or consider it for yourself, when the last the last time you exercised, maybe it was today, who knows, last time you exercised, what happened first? Did you breathe more deeply first or did you breathe, did you breathe faster first? And the answer to that is that you will have breathed deeper first. Exactly this model we just showed you in terms of this spirometer trace. What happens that is that later in exercise, or perhaps put better, during uh, heavier intensities of exercise, as we're doing more and more anaerobic work, we will be begin to breathe faster. So we breathe deeper first, we, we use our vital capacity, we breathe faster second. In other words, we increase the frequency of this wave, of this tidal volume, okay? So those are some nice ideas. I hope that's useful. Cheers.